Okay, Joel. Good morning and a blessed Easter to each and every one of you. Welcome to what obviously is a very special kind of Easter service. And it's produced by our technical directors, Cheryl and Keith Johnson. The instrumental you've just heard is from Stony Brook United Methodist Church in our Columbus North District. Our guest soloist this morning is Sky Johnson, daughter of Keith and Cheryl. Thank you for joining us on what is often called Resurrection Sunday, April the 12th year 2020. Certainly this is a most unusual Easter for each and every one of us. It's the first one since 1961 that I have not conducted in a sanctuary, obviously in a church. As we have heard over and over again on the TV, we're all in this together. So stay safe, have faith, and certainly pray. We're going to plan to do this in weeks coming until it's safe to go back into our sanctuary at Peach Blow. Emily and Joel want to thank each and every one of you for how kind you've been to us during this period together. We thank you for your cards, your comments, your phone calls. I could go on and on, but we thank you very much. This week I got a letter from one of my best buddies that I grew up with from kindergarten through college. His name is Ron Warshing. He lives in Arizona. He sent uh, a particular newspaper uh, from Arizona, and the headline is, If You Don't Laugh, You Cry Coping with the Virus Through Humor. Now, a little bit of history. You may remember that uh, Roger Williams in 1600, no, I think it was around 38, founded a Baptist church in Providence, Rhode Island. On the front of their billboard, this is supposed to be funny now, this is an introduction. On the front of their billboard of the church, it said this, had not planned on giving up quite this much for Lent. And that was meant, as I said, to be just a little bit funny. Uh, let me read to you now a call to worship. Come, let us celebrate Christ's resurrection together. Praise God for the hope that is ours because, that's right, Christ's resurrection. That hope is not only a promise of the future life, but we've got to remember, folks, it's a promise of real living right now. May God grant to us new life in Christ as it begins now and certainly goes on through eternity. Let me have a brief prayer. The trumpets that we heard this morning remind us of the resurrection. They resound with timeless words. Come. See, go, tell, come Lord Jesus, and fill each of us that we may be alive, not only in the future, but in today's presence. In Christ's name, humbly, we give to you thanks. Amen. We're going to hear in just a few moments after I read the scripture uh, our first uh, solo uh, from Sky, but let me first of all read to you. Uh, I've selected um, John 20, and I'm going to read it and paraphrase it, and I will try to, to read it in a way that uh, uh, we don't take up too much time, and yet we want to hear the word. And now Mary Magdalene uh, came to the tomb early. Well, it was still dark, and she saw that the stone had been taken away from so she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved so much. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have taught, laid him. Peter then came out with the other disciple, and they walked toward the tomb. They both then ran, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb. 
and they stopped looking as he saw linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following, and he went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloths lying there, and a napkin which had been on his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. And then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw, and he believed. And yet he did not know the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. This morning I'm going to talk a little bit about Mary. Mary was weeping outside the tomb. And before I do a little of that, let us now listen to this beautiful solo. Hi, Joel. He's muted. No. Go. Am I on yet again? For many years, our culture has become, I think, quite empty. Uh, there was little sacredness toward human life. 
I believe when we get through the period that we're in now, we're going to find new hope in our culture. I really believe that. And I believe it's going to be a time of spiritual renewal, a time of uh, restoration of faith. I come from uh, a background where at least part of my relatives were from southern Ohio. And uh, I used to hear my grandpa particularly talk about the three R's of education, reading and writing and arithmetic. Well, in religion, I believe there are three R's. There's resurrection, recognition, and response. I believe that's the miracle of Easter itself. The first is the miracle that comes from God, literally, that God raised Jesus from the dead. It's what makes our faith so very, very special. But the second part of the Easter miracle has to do with each one of us. Notice the resurrection stories that you may read today. They did not recognize Jesus right at first. We think of particularly the scene where Mary did not recognize that it was somebody more than the gardener. And we remember the disciples as they did not recognize Jesus right in the beginning, whether it was a walk to Emmaus or whether it was with Peter cooking along the side of the river. So one of the th things that I guess I want to throw up here is a little insight that I've thought about for years. I believe the resurrection body that we all will have and have looks a little different. I believe, and again, this is opinion, it's not necessarily scripture. I believe the reason a lot of folks, whether it was Mary or the disciples, I believe the body did look a little different. And it took them a while to recognize that it was truly Jesus. It was Jesus that they had known. Recognition is part of what happens when the Lord heals our eyes that we may see clearly God in Jesus. The third part of the miracle and the final is our response, folks. Mary exclaimed, teacher, and she was ready to hug him. But Jesus had to point out that he had not yet ascended to be with his father. And I love how the impatient Peter who was on the, uh, the boat and the boat was not getting there fast enough. He could see Jesus cooking along the side. So he jumped into the water and swam as fast as he could to be with Jesus as breakfast was being cooked. And then they went on, folks. They did preaching and teaching and healing and making disciples. They even wrote letters of faith. They encouraged people. In a word, they started the church. That's quite a response. So Easter, I wish you a very happy and blessed Easter. It is a miracle. Anytime one is dead and then raised to new life, you can say that is a miracle that comes from God. But there is so much more. When we experience the rest of the miracle, may the Lord also open our eyes that we can see him in places that we've never seen him before. And may the Lord help us to respond with joy, hope, and love, and our dedicated service to the good news that Christ the Lord, my extended family at Peach Blow, has risen today. Let us now listen again to our special music, 310. Thank you. 
this formal part with a prayer and then I want to say hi to each and every one of you. Uh, let me pray. Lord, on this Easter day, help us to celebrate the joy of your resurrection and see you at work in our world today and join in your mission at Peach Blow as we respond with love to what you have done for each one of us. It is in the name of the risen Lord and now may the joy and the peace and the love of the risen Lord be with you now and forevermore. Amen.